marketing beyond digital and, and really transcending technology to create a human connection. I sat down with a global sales leader who had been selling in the wind industry for 20 some odd years. And if you've ever driven through, you know, kind of rural areas, you see these wind turbines. They're massive, they're technologically advanced. They were built in a time when sensors were automatically put on them. And they have control systems and a lot of technology that goes into it already. So this man, new technology, he had done advanced sales. We're having a conversation about the business and he looks at me and says, can you explain to me what digital is? And I kind of looked at him and I went, what was that? And he was like, I genuinely just want to know what digital is. I see the commercials on TV. <laughs> Everyone's walking around talking about GE Digital. What is it? I don't get it. And I thought that was a really genuine, authentic question, uh, and actually really vulnerable question that, that became a highlight and something I always kind of circle back to. So that was my first experience. And so I share these stories because they really illustrated to me the three challenges that we face. I mean, you've all probably faced these as well, right? We've got the stigmatization of digital, just that word carries a lot of stigma with it now, either because it's so jargon heavy, people are exhausted by it, or it creates this culture of where well, I'm not digital, so maybe I just don't get it. Um, and then the second one, systems integration. Systems being tech systems and systems being people systems, both internally within organizations and then with partners, right? Someone has an organization and a system they set up. How do you as a vendor or as a service provider integrate into it? And then data capture. <coughs> Obviously structured, unstructured data coming through all of our pipes and our websites and our different digital interactions. But I'm not sure about you all. Going from a different B2B and B2C spaces but that had pretty good digital systems set up and going into GE, which is incredibly relationship-based, <laughs> Sales first, high touch. We had so much data living in real life verbal conversations. And like that is the, ma you know, the macro of unstructured data. And so what was interesting and what I found across the board at GE and before GE about these challenges is that they really uncover a larger need that people are facing trying to solve them. It's not about the technology system that we're trying to solve for. It's this really human need now to find purpose and meaning behind what the technology is trying to deliver. So I call that the human-centric shift. This idea that 20, for the last 20 years, we've been focused on digital for the sake of digital, which is completely appropriate. Smartphones were invented. Social media was invented. We had the internet evolve. We were creating digital for the sake of digital and we were using it and trying it because no one knew what else we were gonna do and you just kinda had to get your hands in there and get dirty. But we've done that, our digital literacy has increased and so now we're moving into the human-centric age where it really is about the how, the why me, the what are you gonna do for me and how are you gonna drive outcomes. You're working with a company that's based in invention. So the question about, you know, what's your customer experience? I would say ours is high touch, sometimes to the point of frustrating, because you literally have a room of inventors who will say, yeah, yeah, we'll sell you this, but let's talk about what we can build together. <laughs> what else do you want to do? How do we make this better as a team? So that co-innovation and partnership was part of our DNA. That made us different. And so going through this work, we really found and we were able to bring to the conversation, yes, the commoditization of that product, right? It's software does X, Y, and Z, but here's what you get working with us. And so my recommendation is do that work, define yourself first, know who you are, the same way we all walk into the room, really trying to be our own person, and then find out what that intersection is with your customer, and it becomes really easy and authentic. Number two, demystify the jargon. Going back to that sales leader, he says, what is digital? And I honestly couldn't answer the question. I was like, well, it depends on the context, the time, the situation. I mean, we're sitting in a room and you've got like five devices, so that's technically digital. You've had sensors on wind turbines since the 90s. I guess that's digital. Uh, but we're doing something different. And so how is that difference happening? And so what we did is take every mention of the word digital and you all, you know, live and work in the United States. I'm sure you've all seen the GE Digital commercials. So there was a lot of stuff. <laughs> there was a lot of collateral and assets and language. And we said, how, if we got rid of the word digital, what would we put in its place? What does it really mean? What are we really trying to say? What's one word, phrase, or sentence that we can sub in there that explains what it does, what it's going to do for you, 
or what we're talking about. And if we can't do that, we've got a major problem. And so with that exercise, and I recommend you do this for any kind of jargon word in your business, you'll learn two things. One, you'll realize how many people were actually talking about different things the whole time. Because <laughs> everyone has a different definition to a word. So you get alignment really quickly or clarity really quickly. Or you've got a whole other set of questions to go back and say, well, maybe that's why we're not converting as quickly. Because actually, we don't even know what we're talking about. I got my degrees in journalism. I worked in magazine writing and editing with Condé Nast and Tribune Corporation, helped them build websites, and then said, I'd rather not be hungry and poor. <laughs> this marketing thing looks like a lot of fun, so I shifted into digital. Uh, but journalism is really interesting because it does two things. You learn how to ask questions, but you also learn how to translate and create content for your audience. Because the goal is that you communicate that idea in a way that the reader then feels empowered. And we talked about this in the previous talk, but how often are we doing it for ourselves to look good versus our customer to be the star. And so with limited budget, because we're a startup division, we went, well, we don't need a lot of high production value. Who's the people that, that really need to be the star of the show? Our customers, our sellers, our customer success managers. How do we start getting authentic information out that means something really quickly to our customers? They don't care about the jargon. They don't care about how amazing GE is. They want to succeed. They want to be on stage. They want to be the stars. And so things like podcasts, sitting down with a lavalier that's 20 bucks and a recording app on your phone with a subject matter expert saying, talk to me about how you came up with this idea. That's great content. That takes virtually no time and money. And it starts something that you can roll out internally, get communications comfortable with it, and then figure out how to scale that across the organization and then to your customers. What great content that the customer can say, well, I really want to know, right, that transparency. I want to know why you built this in the first place. And I don't want to talk with, you know, this person. I don't want to sit with the executive. I want to talk with the builder, the maker, the person that I ideated it, the person that used it. And so we started coming up with content, really putting on journalist hats that said, what is it? Is it videos that we could do tours of our office? Is it our customer success managers doing FAQs based on what they really are answering questions on? Is it podcast series with our subject matter experts to talk about why and how and what they're brainstorming about? You think about websites like curiosity.com. Let's stretch our imaginations. Let's have fun. And so by becoming journalists, we did two things. One, everyone then became a marketer and a content creator because everyone had a story to tell within a different facet. And two, we were able to start creating content that got to market a lot faster than our customer base because we weren't worried so much about a production value. We weren't worried so much about what would we look like. It was really focused on the customer. Because I think the most critical resource is not time or money, it's your people. And especially because we are in a commoditized marketplace. I know we're all very special. Our products are special. We're all, <laughs> we're all commodities. So what are you going to do to differentiate and be uh, more, competitive, more competitive moving forward? And I, I truly believe it's redefining innovation for the teams and the people that you work with. And so I, I was trying to explain this to my teams on what innovation really is. And I ended up with this matrix to illustrate that it doesn't mean you're making the new iPhone. All that time, you could be innovative, doing innovative things, but you're so worried about not being innovative and trying to figure it out. So explaining to someone, if you say five minutes figuring out an Excel macro, and then you train other people, that's five minutes times 80 people, that's innovation. I'll take it. What an amazing experience. Then you walk into the workplace, you are an innovator, and you get to say, you know what, my innovation was chipping away at a process that actually is going to help us compete. We can't wait around for the next iPhone. It's not going to happen. But our businesses have to move forward and grow, and everyone understanding that they are innovative and finding their space will help it develop. Hi, Ed Bodensik here, founder and chief experience officer of Cravity. I just heard Kim Brown from GE Renewable uh, give a great talk, and we're here at the Chief Experience Officer Exchange 
I can tell you the one big takeaway that I had was in her six secrets to being more and moving more to human-centric design was to redefine innovation. Couldn't agree more. It's idea of relentless incrementalism. You can accomplish a lot and be truly transformative by redefining innovation. So thank you, Kim, and great job. Appreciate you sharing such super insight with us here today.